Hey, I hope everybody's enthusiastic today. It is September the 24th, 99 days left in the year. This is your daily devotional, your thought for the day. Hey, if you're new here, why don't you click a like, subscribe to the channel, share this with a friend. We have 10 minutes of devotion today, so let's get started with the scripture. Psalm 38, verse 15. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope. Thou wilt hear, O Lord, my God. For those reading the Bible in a year, today you're reading the Song of Solomon 4 to 5 and Galatians chapter 3. Here's your thoughts for the day. Fight for your opinions, but do not believe that they contain the whole truth or the only truth. Grief can take care of itself, but to get the full value of a joy, you must have somebody to divide it with. The reward of a thing well done is to have done it. Motivation for today. Religion is man's quest for God. The gospel is the savior God seeking lost men. On this day in history, 1960, the world's first nuclear-powered submarine, the USS Enterprise, is launched in Virginia. 1971, the British government announces that 105 Russians are to be deported from Britain for espionage activities. And in 2020, Judge Amy Coney Barrett is nominated to replace Ruth Bader Ginsburg for the American Supreme Court. Here's your personal story for today. I see you. Two people can look at the same thing at the same time and see things differently. An old table in a secondhand store looks like trash to one, a treasure to another. One set of fans at a football game will see triumph and the other's tragedy. On the Mount of Olives, you know that first Palm Sunday, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem by Jesus just before his death? Two saw the same scene differently. The disciples saw the triumph of the moment while Jesus saw tragedy. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I've longed to brood you as a hen broods its chicks. Jesus saw tragedy that day, not triumph. Now, the tragedy had three parts. First, the people wanted peace but did not know what would bring peace to them. True peace is only found in Jesus Christ. Second, they did not realize the destruction that they faced. Forty years later, Rome would capture Jerusalem in 70 AD, kill 600,000 people, destroy the temple, not one rock left upon another. Jesus also knew that they would all face judgment unless they received the forgiveness of sins through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Third, he wept because they did not recognize the time of God's coming. God became a man and lived among us, Emmanuel. Yet many did not recognize that and instead rejected him. They were looking for a warrior king that would kick the Romans out. Instead, Jesus came to save them from themselves. So a few days after the triumphant entry, the cries of Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, the palm leaves waving as he entered became crucify him, crucify him. What do you see when you look at your church and your calling? There's some thoughts to ponder on. And let's go on to the devotional thoughts for today. Job 42 verse 2. I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. References from Job 42, 1 to 17. The belief that illness is judgment that's common, even in today's day and age. As we have seen, Job's three friends were convinced of this. But the book of Job shows clearly that God can use suffering to bring people to a deeper understanding of himself. Had Job not suffered, neither he nor his friends would have come to a truer understanding of the Lord. After his long cross-examination, Job finally recognizes his own humility and the Lord's greatness. Job's statement in verse 6 reflects an ancient Israelite way of expressing sincere humility. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. 
Most importantly, Job experiences restoration with the Lord beyond all that he could imagine. Job had never truly forsaken God, despite his friends' unjust claims. Now they must face the Lord and repent of the cruel things they said about the Lord and Job. What supreme irony that these comforters would now have to seek Job as an intercessor before the Lord. But the Lord's charge to these three also forces Job to forgive them as fully as he must. Short-sighted, Ruth 4, verses 5 to 6. Then said Boaz, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Myopia. It's an eye condition in which the visual images come into focus in front of the retina, causing distant objects to be blurred. We come and call this being nearsighted. We can see things close up, but not far away. People also can be nearsighted in their understanding of God's plan for their life. The relative who was closest to Naomi and Ruth turned down the opportunity to redeem Naomi's land and marry Ruth because he feared it might jeopardize his own inheritance. He could see clearly what he had. However, he failed to discern what might be in the future. He chose to protect his current possessions and thus missed the opportunity to be the grandfather of the king and the ancestor of the Messiah. Consequently, he passed off the scene without even a mention of his name. Many individuals today do the same. They pour everything they have into this life, all their time, talent, energy, and money. Ah, not bad. Good idea in some sense. Yet they fail to invest in eternity. That's where the real treasure should lie, right? Jesus instructed us to do that. So that should be top of mind, right? Well, they clearly discern what they have, but they fail to see that there's something even more in store for them. They focus on the present. Again, not a bad thing, but they neglect the future. Aha, there's the rub. Keep your eyes on the present, but with a plan for the future, and the future is eternity, ruling and reigning with Christ. So they give up all the wonders of heaven for the temporary security of earthly treasures. And when the winds of history pass, even their names are forgotten. Don't suffer from spiritual myopia. As a good steward, take care of what God entrusts to you today. But don't let today's possessions blind you to eternity's possibilities. What lies ahead is worth more than anything you hold in your hands today. The best is yet to come. Hang on to your fork. Dessert is just around the corner. Don't let what is good Rob you what is great and best. That concludes today. On to the facts. In Philadelphia, you can't put pretzels in a bag, and that's based on the Act of 1760. In Texas, it's against the law for anyone to have a pair of pliers in his or her possession. We'll put that down as believe it or not. Look it up. See if it's true. Here's your closing thought. Who cares for me above all others? Take the time to find out. We're reminded of that quite often in these devotionals. The Lord loves us and cares for us deeply. All right, I got a couple of jokes or quips. Now, abstract art, you're, you're familiar with that? Well, it's the product of the untalented, sold by the unprincipled to the utterly bewildered. And here's one for you. I just burned 2,000 calories. Yep, that's the last time I leave brownies in the oven while I nap. That's all I got. Thanks for coming. God bless. See you tomorrow.